Hey everyone, I'm Clayton here in northern Egypt, not too far from the Israeli border where Egypt just dropped a bombshell. Is this a huge middle finger to the United States and Israel? I'll get to that in a minute. Of course, just north of this location is the Israeli border and now all out war against Hamas, all out war against the Gaza Strip. And if you didn't think a world war was possible before with the NATO war in Ukraine, We'll get ready. A few hours ago, the Israeli Defense Ministry just announced an invasion and destruction of Gaza. And I'm quoting him now. There will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. We are fighting human animals and we will act accordingly. Many people on social media saying, well, that would be a war crime, of course. The term war crime is being used a lot in the past few days. We do have reports now showing Hamas using US weapons meant for Ukraine. Imagine how that happens. We send billions of dollars in money and weapons to Ukraine only for Ukraine to sell them on the black market to Hamas. I'm also continuing to push to stop funding the war in Ukraine and push those countries to peace. Um, and now with what's happening in Israel, we're looking at a whole different situation. I wanna track the serial numbers of the weapons that Hamas is using against Israel. And I want to know if they came from Afghanistan or if they came from weapons that we provided to Ukraine. So we're following that part of the story. We'll have a larger report on that later this week. Meanwhile, how many innocent people are about to be destroyed, caught in between this mess? The answer is a lot. The next few hours will be pivotal for people living in Gaza. The country of Lebanon just fired a dozen rockets at Israeli targets, warning Israel, stay out of Gaza. If Israel invades Gaza, that will bring a response from Hezbollah. All bets are off, world war. Nearby the violence, of course, is their neighbor to the south, Egypt, where I am right now. Egypt, of course, shares a border with both Gaza and Israel. They're in that incredibly unique position. And over the past few hours, Egypt sent a stunning message to President Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu saying, no, we will not get involved. The president of Egypt, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, has turned down a request by the United States to send forces into Gaza to help attack any targets in Gaza. Biden just announced emergency weapons to Israel and, of course, is looking for anyone else that's willing to jump in and help attack Gaza. You know, who else wants to jump in? Is there a coalition of the willing? Every nation in this coalition has chosen to bear the duty and share the honor of serving in our common defense. Instead, Egypt is staying neutral will not send forces into Gaza. Remember, of course, Egypt fought a bloody war against Israel, and more recently, they've dealt with attacks from Hamas in here in northern Egypt. So Egypt says it will remain neutral. Unless we are attacked, we will not enter this conflict. This is a big moment. And in recent years, of course, Egypt has been the mediator of these conflicts, the sort of the go-between between between Israel and uh, Hamas. And Egypt is calling on both sides right now to end this violence immediately. That's the message just about an hour ago from the Egyptian government. This is a bold move by Egypt. You're giving basically the middle finger to the United States, which is a country that has kept Egypt under its thumb for many years. We do know that Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, just spoke with his counterparts uh, here in Egypt. I can only imagine what it must be like to be a fly on that wall, listening for the United States asking Egypt you know, look, you're, you're, you're the neighbor right there to the south, right near the Gaza Strip. Sure you don't want to send any troops? Sure you don't want to send anything? Egypt saying, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, the U.S. currently has export controls against Egypt. Not sanctions, but export controls. And that limits, of course, who can do business with Egypt. And because of U.S. sanctions in Africa, it severely hurts Egyptian trade and its economy. Uh, Egyptian economy is of course, not very strong. Of course, the Egyptian pound has taken an absolute beating. Uh, it is, of course, the leading currency here in Egypt, uh, but really the US dollar is second to the Egyptian pound. And in some towns in Egypt, the US dollar is the primary means of doing business. Talk to Egyptian businesses and they'll all tell you US dollars, yeah, we accept US dollars for goods and services. A source at a top Egyptian bank told me today that almost all of the large transactions are carried out in US dollars and the Egyptian pound is losing value. It has been for the past few years. So Egypt is under the thumb of the United States monetarily. And for Egypt to say, hey, sorry, we're not doing your bidding is a bold move. Also of note, Egyptian buildings in Cairo have raised the Palestinian flag, just like they've done in Iraq, Syria, Iran, Kuwait, and Libya, Palestinian flags. 
hitting skyscrapers at nighttime. Also, I found this to be a stunning admission today, just actually a few minutes ago, from Egypt. Egypt's top intelligence officials saying that Israel totally dropped the ball here. They ignored huge warning signs that something big was coming from Hamas in Gaza, and they did nothing to stop it. In other words, Egypt says Israel knew this was coming. They warned Israel. They had multiple conversations about it. They admitted this. Israel has arguably the most sophisticated intelligence service in the world, and yet they purposefully didn't do anything to stop it. Egypt says they knew about it. So if that's true, why would they do that? Why would Israel ignore a potential attack? Well, let you make up your own minds on that. So as the sun sets here on this very hot day here in Egypt, worries that this is about to get a whole lot worse. We'll be watching it very closely. We'll see you real soon. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. We are not controlled by billionaires. We are independent media. So thank you so much for your support and we'll see you soon.